man i was hoping for a moody morning here in the mountains and i got one didn't i so it took a little bit of willpower to get out of bed this morning and to drive uh, over an hour to get here but as usual it was totally worth it this is beautiful we have beautiful fog and clouds rolling in today is going to be a rainy day supposedly it's going to be raining on and off the whole day and that's why i decided to come here to the uh, nearby mountains there is nothing like a little bit of atmosphere to make the place come alive I really like this rock here. I think it uh, makes for a nice foreground against this background. I really like the shape. I think it all fits together nicely in the frame. To actually highlight the, the, the shape of the rock, I might want to darken the other rocks around it uh, in post. It's raining again, so the fog is coming back. And just like that, the fog has swallowed the whole landscape. So shooting handheld doesn't mean that we don't care about the composition. I hate tripods, you know, I try to avoid them as much as I can. I really like the flexibility that shooting handheld gives me. But again, it doesn't mean that we don't care, that we don't compose uh, with care, with uh, attention to details. In this case, this is a nice tree, just a, a very simple image. I really like the, the tree, the, the very clear shape against a rather foggy obscured background and i also like the shapes of the uh, the mountains and the uh, the lines that it creates what i was paying attention to here was to make sure that the upper part of the tree you know where the uh, branches uh, start uh, that it was uh, clear from the background so it started that part of the tree started just above the uh, the lines uh, the, of the mountains the shapes of the mountains I was, of course, trying to avoid the fence and trying to place the bottom of the tree, the very bottom of the uh, trunk, at the very bottom of the frame, at the end of the, uh, that uh, first mountain in the background, making a, a diagonal line from right to left and from top to bottom. So I placed the trunk at the end of that. I think that works. Again, not the most beautiful image, but I think it's very simple and it works. You see, it's nice, but I think I prefer the one with the tree. So, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little town down there, and it looks super cool in this landscape with all the fog. I'm trying to find a better angle, though, because the roofs of the town are kind of dark, and in a black and white image, they don't stand out against the landscape. But some of the buildings have white walls, which could contrast very nicely in this landscape against this landscape. I'm just trying to find a better angle to get that contrast. Because from here, this image doesn't really work, even though, as you can see, it is incredibly beautiful to look at. I had to stop really quick here because there is another very cool image here, car. Anyway, as I was saying, what I was trying to do here is to place these trees here on the bottom left of the frame and the, uh, the mountain uh, disappearing into the fog, you know, the diagonal line going down from right uh, to left and from top to bottom. So we have 
uh, the middle of the frame is empty and we have that contrast be between the two corners, bottom left and top right. That was my, my idea. It's not as clear now because the fog uh, has kind of moved on a little bit. It's more uh, clear, but I think the image will work uh, nice. I'm going to try to take another one just in case it works better with, with less fog. Now, I think I liked it more with the, with the fog again because uh, most of the frame was empty. Uh, only showing those trees and the uh, the mountain. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, still not ideal, but much better than before. So we have uh, one of the the houses here on the uh, very end of the uh, town, and uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, white, as I said. It is much clearer from here than it was from back there. The thing is that is, there is a lot of distance between the bottom of the frame where I place the town and the top of the frame where the uh, mountains are first showing up above the fog. It still works, it's, it's nice, but it's one of those images that you have to really look at the details and from really up close. I'm gonna keep going because I think I might get a better angle and also I'm just gonna wait to see if the fog keeps moving and keeps changing and keeps revealing parts of the landscape that are hidden right now because you just never know what is going to happen here and this is one of the things that I'm going to be doing this morning I'm not going to chase images I'm just going to wait for them to come to me just from this very same spot or just walking around here I should be able to get a lot of uh, different images Okay, so now we can see more trees there just above the town. So I'm gonna take another photo. Okay, so from this angle, the house is uh, much more visible. I'm trying two different compositions. One is capturing the whole thing and just placing the house again on the bottom right and the uh, big mountain on the uh, top left. And then the other composition is uh, getting a little bit closer, zooming in a little bit more so the house is bigger in the frame. And I am contrasting the house on the bottom left in this, uh, this time and that uh, little line of trees on the top right and the fog is actually also uh, doing like a, an S shape or something like that so I think uh, it guides the viewer through the frame nicely as well So this is the best angle yet from where the uh, town is more uh, clear. The thing is that the composition uh, from this spot doesn't work as well because well the mountains, the shapes and everything, they are not as uh, compelling as they were uh, down there. So I'm gonna have to compromise somewhere, but who knows, I might be wrong. Uh, this uh, ties nicely with my last video about emotion in photography. This is absolutely beautiful and the reason why I'm here today instead of uh, yesterday is because of the weather, because it's raining, because I knew, well, because I was hoping that I was going to get conditions like these ones. And 
This is a beautiful place no matter what, but today it's giving me goosebumps to see it this way because to me this is absolutely beautiful and absolutely breathtaking. So of course I'm going to be here when I'm feeling this way and not yesterday when I wouldn't be feeling uh, this way about the landscape. But uh, as I said in that video, one thing is uh, what I'm feeling here in the field when I'm taking photos and a different thing is uh, what my images are going to evoke in people like you who are not here with me but uh, are looking at the images by themselves. Uh, so uh, my hope, my intention with uh, my uh, photography is to bring as much, as many of those feelings to whoever is looking at my images. And that is, again, my, my hope. But uh, it is hard for me to tell in the field if I'm achieving that, if I'm accomplishing that mission, because my emotions of the moment interfere with uh, that objective, uh, you know, vision of, uh, of, uh, of my photography. Experience helps a lot with knowing what works better and what works a little bit worse. For example, in these situations, I am very tempted to capture the, the fog and the, uh, you know, the, the landscape right now is very subtle. I could go for very high key images and that could create yeah, some mystery and some, um, they, they'd be beautiful, but there is a very fine line when we are taking photos of fog like this, of uh, far away landscapes between beautiful, peaceful and still and boring. That's why in these situations I like to have something, even if it's just tiny, that offers some contrast in the image, some anchor to the viewer. That could be just one tree rising above the fog or just hinting the top of a mountain above the fog as well, but something. Look at that. Now we have that mountain there, the shape uh, that is going uh, diagonally, and that is a very good example of something that works really well and something that I should be capturing instead of talking to the camera. So, excuse me one second. Um, that's beautiful. All right, so it got very, very foggy now. The view is uh, definitely gone. And while I think there's still plenty of images to make from here, because this is gonna keep changing all the time, uh, I'm gonna move because uh, I've been here for a long time. I'm gonna drive down to a little town. It's not the one that I was photographing, it's a different one. Uh, this one is called Froshan. Uh, it's a, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's just a, a few houses and there is a cool hike too. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I've done it plenty of times and uh, it depends uh, how uh, on how foggy it is down there. It goes through a forest so it'd be cool with fog but I don't know if uh, it's gonna be as foggy uh, down there as it is uh, here. As I said, a beautiful place, but it's, uh, it's not foggy down here. The conditions are just of uh, a cloudy day. So I think I'm gonna go back to higher altitudes. I'm gonna go back to the car and just keep driving on that road and see what I can find.
Okay, hope you can see it. The ridge back there, but there used to be a town there almost 2,000 years ago. Of course, it's gone now. There are only a few stones left and a little bit of the uh, wall around the town. But what a location to have a, a, a settlement. I don't know if it was a Roman settlement or a Celtic settlement or what. It's a pity that there are no buildings left. It'd be awesome for photography. But what I got here instead is there that church from the uh, modern town of Villamore, I think, which you can clearly see now, but just a few minutes ago the fog was playing hide and seek with it and I, uh, I took a few videos and photos and they are going to be good, I think. Waterfalls are not really my thing. I don't know why, but I mean, this one is right here next to the road, so why not? 1.3 seconds, that's probably not enough. I'm gonna use this ND filter. This is a six stop ND filter. By the way, there is a tree to the right of the waterfall that I've been trying to, to avoid, but I think uh, it just looks better with the tree. I just decided to embrace it. So there are two vertical directions in the frame. That is the waterfall and the tree. I think that makes sense to me at least. Wow, so it's really raining now. Uh, the camera got, both cameras got pretty wet. I think I dried it pretty well, so hopefully everything is okay. But yeah, as uh, as I said, I love shooting in bad conditions and uh, it makes for uh, uh, great opportunities for, to make good images. But that being said, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't like shooting in the rain. Uh, it's not my favorite. Not just because the rain can ruin your camera gear but also you get wet and you get cold and things can get miserable very quick that's why i'm very thankful to have a car for photography so you know i can pull over and take a photo of a waterfall on the side of the road and run inside the car if the rain comes so i am safe my camera gear is safe i've praised car photography many times in the past for this very same reason I'd rather be walking or hiking, of course, but when the conditions are miserable, that can wear us down really quick and we might run out of energy and willpower uh, to make more images when they, uh, they, they might be coming just after the rain. And the car photography I did for a while, but eventually it was time to call it a day. It was a beautiful morning, full of mood. I really enjoyed my time out there. I hope you enjoyed the video and the images as well. All of this is possible thanks to my patrons and their support. Today I want to highlight the work of Eric Mir, a terrific photographer from Oregon. And just looking at his images, uh, it makes me feel like I'm back there. It feels like home. And I recommend you to uh, check his work out, to give him a follow on Instagram. You won't be disappointed. That's all. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.